Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Secrets of the Sire. We do this every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, talkradio.nyc, and streaming live, as always, on facebook.com slash Secrets of the Sire. And uh, as always, I'm joined by my uh, co-host extraordinaire, the Lord of the Radio, which I, I, I feel i got to keep calling you Lord of the Radio. Every it's time. in the contract. Oh, i got to find this it's contract. Con- yeah, so do I, actually. <laughs> why would I? Because I'm afraid I didn't sign it. Why would, <laughs> so, I, why would I do that? Why would I do that? Know. How drunk was I when, we, when we wrote this contract? You're often plenty drunk. Well, I have to... I have varying degrees of drunk. Very, very, very many people are taking advantage of you. And, yeah. And we're not. See, I think I was more distracted than drunk. Because no, I'm drunk, still dude. pretty on point. You, I told you In I fact, wanted to I'm call myself. Myself, Lord of the Radio, and you were like, oh, "That's fine." No, which which would tell no, me that exactly. That's high. That's much different. That's, well, that's high. That's hey, not drunk. That's hey, if you want to split different. hairs, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> potato, potato. But hey, we are also joined uh-huh. by fellow talk radio uh, extraordinaire hosts from the Rob and Callie uh-huh. show. We have Rob K and Callie Alpert. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna oh Uh-oh. The video. camera pivot. Pivot. That almost never happens. Pivot. Good evening, pivot. everybody. Thanks for having us. And we're extremely excited to have him, basically because we get to kind of just just ring him through the pop culture uh, laundry, yeah. and uh, and yeah. just get him get him a, a, get him cut, get him into our world. We were actually on your show mm-hmm. many many weeks ago. It was many, many weeks ago. And by the way, Hassan is still calling me kind of traumatized. Like, you guys were so serious. <laughs> you got to so many issues I didn't even know I had. So I'm still doing a little therapy and I coaching I don't know with what you're talking about. Well, tonight's <laughs> retribution because you guys can make me look really stupid. And no, no, no. See, that's no, the beauty. So There's nothing about. stupid about this. We just talk about fun stuff. Like, yeah. you, guys, you guys talk about... As a about, rule like, of thumb, geeks can't really make anyone look stupid uh-huh. because we're, <laughs> we're already starting from zero. Right, so. right. You can only go up at that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, lower exactly. the expectations. If you don't know what we know, you're you're actually a couple of rings above us. <laughs> That's how that works. That's mm-hmm. Very mm-hmm. gracious. <laughs> so, so tell everyone where they can catch your show and what time. Obviously, not where, but we know where. But like, what time and what it's about. Give it. Give us the elevator pitch. So we describe our show. The Robin Cali Show airs Tuesday nights, mm-hmm. eight o'clock to nine o'clock on TalkRadio.nyc Eastern Time, and uh, that's at night. I think I said that. (laughs) And we describe the show as two semi-enlightened friends Mm -hmm. talk openly about life, love, and the pursuit of being yourself. So you basically just copied our show. (laughs) We did, just without all the comic books. Yeah, it's basically the same thing. Yeah. He did say, he, he did use the word enlightened. So well, he said semi, semi, yeah. yeah. semi enlightened. Yeah. So semi completely... still puts some leaps and bounds ahead of wherever we are. Oh well, I absolutely. <laughs> know. I mean, without a doubt, there is like no question whatsoever. We are we are semi unenlightened. Semi unenlightened. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wouldn't that be like the same thing though? No. Isn't that like half and half? No. Just keep moving on, man. All right. Don't, we're gonna don't, no speaking of moving on. We don't are gonna have some fun with you guys here because we figured when we were on your show, we talked about the movies that Callie has to watch, right. like to get right. to like get recognized. So we're gonna run with that. Um, in a little bit, we're going to do a geek diploma. It's back to school. I mean, it's fall. It, it's like forty degrees outside. It, it, it's it's Yay. exactly the little noisemakers are going to be busy. Yeah, exactly. Like well, that I do like. The yeah. Starbucks are a lot less full <laughs> this week than they've been in a while. So I'm, I'm extremely excited. Yeah. But before we get to that, we have to get, get into the news. <laughs> get off my lawn. We have to get into the big news that, that big, just big broke news. yesterday. <laughs> and it, and it's going to make Hassan kind of smile a little bit. Cause I'm not smiling. I'm not happy about this stuff. No. I don't want to get a reputation to be like an anti You You have it already. It's okay. Really? Is the Star Wars franchise in peril? Colin no. Trevorrow. It's no longer directing episode nine. Right. Lucasfilm said Tuesday. Lucasfilm and Colin Trevorrow. Am I saying that right? Trevorrow? Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> have, well, he's not the director anymore. He doesn't yeah, matter. He have doesn't mutually matter. chosen to part ways on episode nine. Colin has been a mutual, wonderful. Is it? Yeah, I know, right? Has been a wonderful <laughs> collaborator throughout the development process. But we all came to the conclusion our visions for right. the project differ. We wish Colin the best. Mm-hmm. And we'll, be sh- well, he's making his Jurassic Park money, so he's. We he's all got living, together in a room. Living. And decided that, that it would be in his best interest. Colin, we just don't think you're a good fit for this. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. That's, we're not that into stand, you. Yeah. That's the standard Hollywood goodbye line. I know it yeah. very well. But that's yeah. the thing, right? It's so not us, it's you. This wouldn't be a big thing. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> 
<laughs> You're giving me the it's not you, it's me speech? No. I invented that speech. It is you, Colin. Yeah, it is you. Um, How'd you go? Uh, no, but this is, the pro- this is the problem with this, right? Uh-oh. If this was an isolated incident... Then it'd be like, okay, well, I understand. It's creative differences. This is the second director in the span of six months mm. that yeah, has been because kicked. it's a circus. It is a circus. It's a, because they're trying to manufacture a, um, a phenomenon, and you can't do it. Would you say they're trying to manufacture a phenomenon that yes. is Star Wars or exploit a phenomenon that already exists? Well, you can't. They, they want to make more <laughs> phenomena. <yeah. laughs> oh, yeah. Whenever you can get uh, you know sounds and grunts out of a song, you've, you've asked the I right questions. I grunt all the time. Some say I'm grunting right now. No, no, I'm that's speaking. To use that words. is actual speaking. <laughs> that's, that is, is that uh, really? It, all is. Right. Well, it others, is. Others would disagree with you. Yeah. But, um, my grandmother is especially. But uh, anyway... It, it's not necessarily exploitive because it, it is exploitive in the sense that it's making a lot of money off of the brand. And is it exploitative or exploitive? Yeah, whatever, dude. Um, I'm dude. asking our co-hosts. Too. You, do you want me to finish? Not really. Do you want, all right. Exploitative, okay. I believe, is the proper. Oh, okay. Oh, I actually oh. like Hassan's I, version better. If so I was enlightened, I would have known. That. <laughs> <laughs> Even semi-enlightened. See, Rob is actually sitting closest to Hassan, so everything he said so far has been in your corner, which is very good. So that's yeah. you know he's like yeah, he I'm in close proximity of he your fist. Knows which of side theory. the bread. Well, I'm his coach. It's like you gotta have your coach on your side. It's like after the show, I'm gonna ask him how the new book's doing. Yeah. 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 Well, and we'll talk. To answer that. that question. So, so you were saying, no, it it, it is exploitative, exploitative, mm-hmm. exploitative. Yeah, yeah. Yes. No, but but you were exploitative, exploitative. Yes. Anyway, would I had another joke, but it's not going to work. Um, but it's 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 exploiting the brand in the sense it's making the money, even though the product is arguably mediocre. Mm. But they're trying to. Manufacture. They're trying to make more of the more phenomenons. Yeah, they want each each one of their product, to, each one of their installments, to be another phenomenon. But could you argue though that they're also trying to make sure that a Spider-Man three doesn't happen, or or something know. god could awful? You, is that your argument? Could you argue that? You're I am one? arguing. That's kind of what. See how I kind of did that. You know, I'm you not arguing kinda, that. I'm no, no, just well, trying to explain why I think that it's uh, it's it's the the wheels have fallen off the the. But the okay, but that's exactly my there. point. You're saying the wheels are falling off me. Well, mm-hmm. I'm sitting there saying, well, maybe they're doing it. And, and Callie kind of shook her head, and 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 Rob's going to jump in as well in too. Your corner. She's well, this is very true, actually. Yeah. <laughs> no, Kelly, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, you know, and, and for the non-geek in the room, and we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. But I do know the Hollywood world pr- reasonably well, having worked in it for, you know, the better part of the last um, 30 years on and off. And so there are always a lot of stories behind the scenes. I often wonder, and here's the, I don't know, maybe the conspiracy theorist in me that I never knew existed until just now, um, <laughs> that thinks, is it is possible that some of this is even part of the creating the hype, is creating that drama Probably. in some inadvertent way, too? Probably. Is there, like a re- is there any reason? Real explanation as to why there's so much flux be- behind these these uh, directors? Well, there's never going to be any real. No, it's always going to be the mutual differences, yeah, the creative and differences, the, and, the, and the superlatives. You know, all that, all that, all that talk that's yeah. going to you know, like, oh yes, we wish them the best of luck and the. Blah, I, I mean, blah. I think. Look, I think it's pretty obvious, right? I think that you you have filmmakers that want to put their stamp on something versus producers that want to keep the brand. You know, in line with or what just they people who want to tell stories. You right. know, if someone yeah. came along and said, "Look, I want to take what we are we already have, and I want to, I want the slickness and the look and the feel, but mm-hmm. I want to, I want to kind of take it to another place." You know, granted, that's a that's a danger. Yeah, but it should be welcome. That's what they should. That's what you would hope that they would be trying to do. Mm-hmm. But you know, as you saw, the last two movies that they made have been pretty much retreads. Very true. You know, the last the, that the, I don't disagree. The, yeah, but first I, movie t- I liked exactly Rogue One. I, I liked I it thought too. Rogue One was actually a good flick. I loved it, but it is it is a, a, a you talk about exploited uh, exploitative. Sure. <laughs> Priya Numbard, another talk radio host, says exploit. Just she just wrote exploit. That's it. Yeah, so we'll, just say, well we'll I should have done that. So wait, yeah. they're wait, exploiting it. But talk about how that <laughs> That's was. That's so exploited. easy. Why did I do that? <laughs> That's why she's another talk radio NYC host because she's very smart. And, right. You know. But but so you thought that movie was exploitative? It how, was, how many light bulbs can four uh, was, <laughs> talk radio hosts it's, it's, screw in, or how many does it take to nah, screw in a light bulb? We can't. We yeah. can't. Well, I know you and I can't. I don't oh, know about anybody. Um, I didn't. I'm. I loved it. 
Yeah, I I think it's a it's a it's a solid film. It's very smart. It's mm. it's uh it's my favorite mm-hmm. um, of the new stuff. Mm. Um, but it is basically capitalizing off of imagery and and and, we, and, and the and and everything that we've seen before. And why do we love it? Because at the end you get this full payoff. Connecting well, yeah, that, to what you knew already. Yes, you right. know. Yeah, I mean, that's, it brought everything. It back brought to the everything back yeah. to exactly what you were familiar with and comfortable with. Because yeah. I'll be honest with you, when I ser- when I was watching Rogue One, I enjoyed it, but I wasn't I wasn't geeking out over it. There wasn't this like there right. wasn't the and, and actually I didn't even mean to use that phrase necessarily, but I did. And and I wasn't it, it wasn't necessarily bringing me back to my childhood. It wasn't giving me this nostalgia factor. It was something new and different. It was interesting. But then once they connected it to what I knew, it was like oh. Yeah, Look but, at this. But put it this way, I think it's a standalone <laughs> film. If I'd never seen Star Wars before and I saw Rogue One, it would make me want to watch episode sure. four. Yeah, it would lead sure. you right into yeah. the other episodes. Yeah. Which is which is I remember uh, the, I remember 1983 Return of the Jedi. I remember watching um uh a promo of it on the news and the the sequence with the speeder bikes, you know, okay, like, yeah. they they see the two uh, troopers and they speed away. And I remember my mom saying, "What the hell is that? <laughs> what did you see that? Did you see him just float away on the air?" And that's kind of what Star Wars used to do. It used to be new things. Yeah, it just, every every movie used to be something that we hadn't seen before. It's tough though, because once you once you I know, watch I know something, it's, you it's put it in the difficult. memory bank, and then it becomes associated with a yes. particular time in your life. You know, be it if you're watching. 1977 a, when you watched it, or if you're watching it when you're like a kid in the 80s. Yes, you know. I mean, it doesn't. Matter. I get it. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not talking about like how yeah. great that movie was and how great that experience was. I'm just talking about this the um, the premise of the fact that that was something that no one had seen before. Sure, and that's that's what Star Wars is, has always been. It's this thing that's always pushing boundaries and expanding. Mm-hmm. And the last two films that we got from this new, uh, you know, this new iteration have been. Uh, see, it's exactly I, I, what you remember it from. I will say this years ago, in defense of the prequels. You know, George Lucas was trying to push technological yes, boundaries, arguably to push too hard. Right. Which, arguably, which he might he have tried focused to push more too hard. on the technology than he did the actual. I think the the actual execution of said story. Yeah, if we want to have but that conversation, in that in that grain, it. at least he was trying to do things with it, like yes. like James Cameron does with Avatar. And you James didn't. Cameron's you don't realize to. that. You don't yeah. realize exactly how at least those things were trying to push until you see, say, The Force Awakens. When sure. You realize how how drastically things could have been withdrawn. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. You know. All right, everybody. Oh, you know. Yeah. I wanted to tell you guys, I saw a great Star Wars t shirt today. This guy had a t shirt on, and it was Darth Vader in front of an audience. Okay. And it's from the back, so you see him from the back, <laughs> and he has his hands up in the air, and it's like he's going, Hello, Tatooine. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it was so great. Well, I mean that's part of it, right? I mean that's that's part yeah, of everything, right? Karate, it's like so. it's like taking things that you know uh, and maybe putting a slight spin on it, but not trying to go you know right. too far. Right, so. right, right, right. right. But you know, well, we'll it see. is what it is. All right, they everybody. fired him. We're gonna, we're gonna get someone. We're else gonna take anyway. a page out of Sam's Sam's book as well. Sam, our trusted engineer, and he's got the conscious consultant hour on every Thursday at eleven and twelve. Why do I think it's at eleven? Nice. Plug, mm, close, Dolce. Close. Hey, look, at least I got him in there. I mean, this is better than you, normal anyway. Well, now they'll listen at 11 and 12. Yes, yes, to whomever is on at 11. Let's everybody take a deep breath. <sighs> That's about as, as in-depth geeky as we're going to get. Because coming up next, we're going to put these two through Geek University. Too bad. Nice, I'm excited. <laughs> You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. want to connect with are you an entrepreneur or entrepreneur looking to build your following welcome to our show follow Follow me friday Friday with joan and priya tune in every friday at noon eastern on talkradio.nyc we're We're your digital connectors connectors. (laughs) (laughs) 
Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. Segment three, we've got American Pie's Thomas Ian Nicholas, who unfortunately is flying to Wizard World Chicago as we speak. How did you do that? That's the mystery of, of <laughs> podcasting, plus a very enormous cell phone bill. We didn't make a deal to pay, right? No. Okay, good. We don't even make, we don't make, every second we are on the air, we yeah. are losing yeah. money. Secrets of the Sire. Welcome back to Secrets of the Sire. We do this every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, talkradio.nyc, and streaming live on Facebook, facebook.com slash Secrets of the Sire. Uh, if you're catching us live, we thank you, and that's awesome. <laughs> if you're catching us on our podcast... If you're catching us live, let us go. <laughs> Stop it. No, 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 Get never, off my never. foot. Uh, Get off my foot. So we're on iHeartRadio. We're on <laughs> iTunes. Every Friday, that's when that gets launched on SoundCloud, on Spreaker, on Stitcher, so we're out over there. And again, if you are listening to us on podcast, <laughs> this is not a live show for you, and I apologize. But we've got awesome guests in studio. We've also got a great guest, which I didn't, I failed to mention at the beginning, though. Uh, great well interview, and well uh, thank you, Jerry Milani from Class Wizard hack. World, for setting that up um, with uh, Biff Tannen himself. You run a, uh, sm- a tight Tom. ship there, Del J. Uh, you, it's, it's whenever whenever something goes wrong, on. it's you run a tight ship. Whenever anything, <laughs> anything's going good, it's like That's we're, how really, it works. we're really doing well, aren't we? That's how it works. <laughs> I just want to say that that um, guitar coming in is very sexy, naughty. Good guitar, it is right there. My that friend. is that is excellent, that excellent. Really now good. I didn't play it. I no, didn't play. No. It. He was the bass player, though. I was the bass player. Really good. Yeah. That's that was, either Dave or uh, that's Dave or Dave. JP. I think it's that's, Dave I on that one. Dave yeah, Fitzfeld. that's Dave on there. So Dave Feld. Well, we'll get the band Shout back out together. To David Feld. We will do something with that at some point. Uh, Secrets of the Sires brought to you by our beloved patrons. We have dedicated fans: Einar Peterson, Matt Byer, Ashley Haikai, <laughs> our program director Stephanie Dolce, our executive producer Steve Ovecki, Brian Phillips, and Christina Gillen. And as always, our Uber fan Christina Dolce, who was on last week. Did a great Game Fix. of Thrones um, Fix. Re, you know, review and, and whatnot yes, with she us. Did. And yes. it was an excellent show. It was our highest rated show mm. to date, actually. Yes. It was really That's exciting. awesome. Yeah, it's not bad at all. That was awesome. Maybe I, she should be on the show. She maybe she should. Be should yeah, maybe she should be the host. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah. Forget, I'll you know, do the show with her. Like this entire. We'll just, <laughs> you'll hear me grumbling. <laughs> yeah, like Pete, like, How'd this how this happen? Like you Pete in the background. <laughs> People just like her better than me, which is my yeah. realization. I shouldn't have had those nachos, by the way. So, right. <laughs> Just letting you know. So, Ra, you well, are actually you you were telling us backstage, yeah. and again, if you are a uh, beloved patron, you you would have gotten this conversation. You actually got into Game of Thrones starting with season seven. I did, I did. What and are you doing yourself? So here's the thing: it's like I never really got into it. I heard all this hype for seasons. I tried to get into it like three or four seasons ago, and I was mm-hmm. like, I just I don't get it. I don't understand it. And then because you was, didn't start from the beginning, right? Right. <laughs> and so, but I have this habit. I did the same thing. I told you guys it was Six Feet Under, Sopranos. I started yeah. like seasons in. Yeah. And Don't, then, but see, those I feel like you can start like yeah. halfway through, and you're not going to yeah. miss but out. See, as I'm much. really smart, so it's like <laughs> I can figure it out. Although I, I have been kind of lost a little bit, but what I have found fascinating about it, because here's what I'm impressed about with the show, is this is the first full season I watched, yeah. and I really like the characters, yeah. especially uh, Peter Dinklage's character, Tyrion, yeah. Tyrion. And it's like just you know to see Jon Snow interact with the the Dragon yeah. Queen. Mm-hmm. What's her name? Uh, Daenerys. Yeah, and it's like. There's so many different things about the show. It's like I said to somebody, it's almost like I think we have all those characters within us. Yeah. You know, like there are all these different sides to us. Mm-hmm. But uh, oh. it's a great show. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think I think of all the seasons to get into, this is the one with the least amount of characters left alive. <laughs> yeah. So it actually does make it easier to get into it. Yeah. So that would be the time that I should start watching. No, yeah. no. Less, less no. Keep start, track of. start watching start next, from next season. Start from the last episode and then work your way and forward. Work your way back. Yeah. yeah. No, no. Start from the beginning. Start from the yes, beginning. Yes, you All should right. start from the beginning. So we were on your show a few, I guess it's a few months ago now. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's been, been, it's been what, about two months? I least? know. It's yeah. amazing. Where did the summer go? What happened? I know, there? It's oh, true. my God. Well, it's it's terrible. Over. Terrible. I want the cold 
weather. Blasphemy. You bite your tongue. You bite your tongue. I'm not going to. Um, it hurts. <laughs> and we gave you some, Callie, we gave you homework es- yes, especially. Yes, We said, yes. these are the things you, you, you have to watch these particular movies. Yeah, so what, Do you remember? What yeah, we, of course oh, I remember. Oh, she remembers. That's good. Well, this is back to school, so I do my homework. I okay. Was a, I was actually, I was a geek of a different sort you okay. know, growing up. Yeah. Or a nerd or, you know, a little bit of a bookworm. So, yes. <laughs> I'm very well behaved with So what, what was your homework? And so what did you, you told what did you me do? to watch three movies I said to okay. you because um, for the benefit of your audience, I am not in any way, I don't speak this language. Sure. I'm not a good comic person. I'm not a big pop culture person anymore. I used mm-hmm, to be mm-hmm. more so. And um, so Neither I has a song, you, so you're okay. It, it works out pretty good. <laughs> right, so, right. Well, he's, ahead, he's way right. ahead of me. No, he's just so faking I, it. <laughs> yeah, I'm a politician, actually. I'm faking it. I'm running for good. president. This That's is my it. campaign. You know what? Then you're going to get my vote. There you go. <laughs> ah, um, yes. And so, yeah, you, I, I asked to be indoctrinated, and mm-hmm. so you spoon fed me three um, suggestions. You uh, you suggested Office Space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Superman, the, fir- the original. Okay, first that was Sons. Yep, that was right? Sons' suggestion. And um, Guardian, Guardians of the Guardians Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah. <laughs> Which I think okay. was a universal, good, get into kind of movie, yeah. Um, so I. I attempted to watch them all in that order. Okay. The very first one that I watched was Office Space, which I loved. Great, yeah. right? Okay. And I thought it was just so funny, and it's very much my sense of humor, mm-hmm. and I could relate to just the, you know, just the, all those characters and have encountered all of them along the way, especially the guy that plays the boss. I don't remember. Oh, yeah. Lombard. Yeah. Um, Lombard. That's, um, um, could you just Jerry? take this yeah. and put it over there? Gary Cole. Thank you so much. Gary Cole's Appreciate Gary Cole. <laughs> and, and, you know, for our audience really out good. there, kind of like, like looking at us kind of funny like why would you recommend office space of all things but it's it's just it's got a lot of it just fits that time period of I don't know. There's just something about it that it just made sense yeah. to like you. You should. Well, it's watch like it. it's got a lot of cross tropes in it. Yeah. You know, like it's, it's got the it's kind of got the the corporate humor. Yeah. Right. But then it's also like you know, there's a lot of rap music in it. Yeah. And there's a, it's just a lot of. Crazy it's Mike Judge yeah, too. Totally. I mean, Speavis yeah. and Butted, Mike Judge, and yes. Silicon Valley, Mike Judge, yes. and it's just like you know, geeks love comic book stuff and love pop culture stuff, but they love being like geeks about yes. th- yeah. about like the the writers and and like the movie. And it's just one of those things. Yeah, you have to, you have to see it. You have to see that movie. And in fact, when I first started watching, and I thought, oh, did I get the right one? Like I was so <laughs> joyful <laughs> that I could join your club, and I didn't have any uh, aversion, like uh, which mm-hmm. I will get to in a moment. Because <laughs> as I told you guys, yeah, you know, coming. anybody when there's anything fantastical or yeah. takes you to okay. a place, coming. or there's <laughs> that's you know, more got characters face. Yeah. or animation, you know, it's not my thing. So there's a few, I've got a few butts coming. Yeah. So um, anyway, I was very pleasantly surprised, and I appreciate seeing okay. that. And thank yeah. you for that. That is, one. of course, the most down to earth of the three movies. That is that very true. Yes. Um, and then I watched. Well, I tried to watch Superman. <laughs> You tried. Yes. Now, to watch admittedly, them. they're probably different, th- and this was all spaced out very evenly um, since we've seen each other. So they were all like, sure. You know, one was right away, mm-hmm. one was in the middle, and one was t- just a few hours ago because uh-huh. I knew I was going to see you guys, and I needed to honor my <laughs> cramming, um, cramming for finals. So, but anyway, um, Superman. I I only watched the first. I don't know, twenty minutes, thirty okay. minutes, mm-hmm. maybe, and, and yeah, and I just was done. Yeah, couldn't do it. I was just <laughs> done. I wasn't feeling it that day. I tried. I tried not to put too much pressure on myself. She's going to love the list that we have coming up. <laughs> you have more, maybe you have an assignment oh, for me. And then today I watched um, the Guardians of the Galaxy. And, well, I should say I watched it. I'm, I'm saying that in quotes. Mm-hmm. I started to watch it. I loved the soundtrack, as predicted, That's, especially by yep. Rob, who knows me very well. Mm-hmm. Um, that I loved. Um, uh, Chris Pratt, Pratt was amazing. Um, yeah. Was very. I'm just checking, make sure. Um, you know, I thought I put was your name cute and <laughs> every single week. Don't and even worry about. Then what it. I did, and I know this might be a, a huge assault to certain people listening, but I sped through it to mm-hmm. get the gist, and then oh. I read the synopsis online so that <laughs> I could be properly. <laughs> I did. What? You told me to be honest. So, so you were a student. You were like a legit why, student. That, that is, is why it. our show works. That's like okay. a legit. <laughs> that's a legit student <laughs> thing to do. This is why I broke out of pop culture. And went into personal growth for this. We balance each other out. That's what I want everyone to know about our show. And I also, you know, I worked in, like I said, I worked sure. in sort of the Hollywood and television world that's for a really long time. So now I, well, I'm being honest, but I offended you, you Hassan, didn't I? I tried. <laughs> you don't I tried to. Way. I 
tried to geek. I tried. You can't speed through the geek. <laughs> <laughs> Geeks are are are. I'm more pathological the about details well, that's about true. the experience. I, well, no, no, no. We we learned this. Nerds are geeks are are more expansive. They they like take it all in. But they still have the same I know. enthusiasm for for nonsense and for for the little details and nuances and stuff yeah. of whatever. So if you're just blitzing through it on fast forward. You're not going to be able to celebrate the... All right. I had to leave enough time to drive into the city that, to be oh, here for you guys. Okay. <laughs> oh, you did it all tonight. That's even better. I did it. <laughs> I did like it a few hours ago. I just crammed through everything. Yeah. Right. So, so we thought... That was my be, foray, my we, attempt. We, we thought this would be a great thing. And, and Rob, too. Because, I mean, Rob, you know, Rob is... Rob dabbles. Rob dabbles in this world. Like, he's like, I saw that movie. I like that movie. I'm watching Game of Thrones season seven. I don't know what you're doing with that. Like, just... <laughs> you know, so you dabble. Yeah. Like, you dabble yeah, in this. I don't this. know what the heck that was about. Um, so we thought it'd be kind of fun. You guys are here to talk about This Is Us soon, right? Yeah. <laughs> now that's that's my language. Okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> Callie has not missed an episode oh of that. Oh, my well, gosh. That, this is, so that we, actually is a great show, by the way. It is It is supposed to be a great show. I'll, Supposedly, I'll yes. I'll yes. catch up on it. Yes, we will catch one day. So we it. thought it would be kind of cool to be like, what... What Someone holds movies hand, right? would you have to watch to get an official geek diploma? So I started, when I thought of this, I was like, okay, what constitutes a liberal arts degree, right? So <laughs> humanities, social sciences, creative arts, sciences, and phys ed. Wow, uh-oh. And then we broke it down a little, well, phys ed I kind of just threw in there afterwards. But, yeah. uh, but then we broke it down even more. So humanities <laughs> comprises English lit, modern languages, history, and philosophy. So we thought, what movies would, 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 would you have to see in order to kind of encompass that, that realm? So this is kind of what we came, came up with here. For the humanities department, Back to the Future, because it's history. There's history. There's time travel in that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It's, it was weak. But we have, a, we have Back to the Future. Back to the Future's Tom Wilson coming on next segment. So we figured we'd rope that in there. Right. Uh, Goonies, because they got pirates. <laughs> pirates are historical, right? <laughs> Conan. Because again, you know, very Conan. historical. Very Wait a minute, historical. Oh we didn't agree it. on Conan. We snuck that in. We snuck that in in the, in the pre-show. Conan's I see not it. even history. <laughs> I see a big epic fail in my future. But Keep going. the one movie you have to see that would get you your humanities degree is Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Oh, okay. Because that encompasses everything. It has English literature. It has <laughs> modern language. It has history. It has philosophy. Mm-hmm. He literally that's pulls all of them out from different time zones. So that's fair. You have to watch that one. That's that. I think would we would uh, incorporate that. I, right, I right feel like I, I'm, I probably have seen snippets, if not the whole thing, and just don't remember. So I will. That I can uh, do. All right. That I can all do. Right. You'll fast forward through it. And social then sciences. I'll, I'll watch it. The social <laughs> sciences incorporate anthropology. Economics, geography, poli sci, and sociology. So we came up with for economics. I, I pulled this one out of my hat here. Actually, it's pretty good. Hat, hat. That's what we're calling it. Oh, it, okay. It's hat face. <laughs> um, <laughs> the secret to my success. Uh, Michael J. Fox yeah. in the eighties. Yeah. Again, it's a quintessential like Republican eighties yeah. movie where yes, it is. he yeah. like works so. really hard and he get, and he rises to the top and he climbs the corporate ladder. Well, that actually, was my he economics kinda shortcuts the top, the rise. I guess he does. Well, yeah. I guess that also is very eighties. Yes, that in that in that in that yeah. sense. Working girl for boys was that, oh, that one? Yeah, yes, that was? yes. In a way, I think yes. I might have actually seen that as well. Oh, see, I'm and, there's, yeah. Yeah. and there's a little uh, nerd trivia in there because the the his love interest. Is Supergirl. Oh yeah! Oh, oh look right. at you go, Hassan. Yeah. You're not just a pretty face. <laughs> no, I'm not even a pretty face. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the theme song to that movie is good. Night Ranger. Oh, very yeah. good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. See, there you go. Bop, bop. And then um, <laughs> you've also got. Oh, so for, for sociology, we, we said Office Space because soci- that's a that's a sociological movie right there. Brian Everham even just did a great um, yeah, Gary Cole impression on our on our Facebook feed uh, right now <laughs> yeah. as well too. Yeah, mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've been missing a lot of work. I can't say I've been missing it, Bob. <laughs> and then we thought for anthropology, Jurassic Park, Indiana Jones. Now, are you guys an Indiana Jones at all? Have you? S- I mean, Rob's got to be an Indiana yeah, Jones. No, so I've seen them all. Yeah. Indiana, you have to see Indiana yeah. Jones. Like that is like that's it. Like that's yeah. your. That's you could fast forward your diploma. No cheating this time. You'd have to watch one of them. Yes, you can't. Yeah. You can't. Okay. Not the Crystal Skull. 
our, well, our, you, whatever you tell me to watch, I will make you a promise publicly right now. Gotta watch Raiders watch. of the Lost Ark. Raiders of the Lost Star, right? I mean, if we had to pick Raiders one Indiana Jones movie to to enter your world, and, and uh, we'll throw this out to the uh, to the f- to the Facebook audience as well, and we'll, we'll get some responses when we come back from break in a little bit. But you know, which Indiana Jones movie would you have to? Would you recommend? Because you know, some people might recommend Last Crusade. It's a little. No. It's a little. No. Well, it's a little more family friendly. It's got no. Sean Connery in it, so there's there's that as well too. No, no, no. no. Son, that's it. Raiders. Mm-hmm. Raiders is always well. You know, I, I Raiders is a phenomenon. Yeah, it is. The others are the others are are very good I, follow ups. Being but Raiders is a phenomenon. Being a youngin in the eighties, I actually saw Temple of Doom first. That doesn't matter. I actually, when I was young, liked Temple of Doom more. Yes, but it doesn't. But and it had that video game. I mean, Raiders it, is a phenomenon. You know, definitely. Something. Everybody agrees. All right, so I, I, I definitely, I totally <laughs> agree. Right. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Hashtag winning. So for creative, <laughs> creative arts. Now this is this is good because there's a couple different things. There's fine art, theater, speech, and creative writing. All right, so that's that's kind of like that encompasses the creative arts. So for for speech, I said any Kevin Smith movie, any Kevin Smith movie would do. Oh, okay. uh, particularly, you have the Star Wars speech. In Clerks, yeah, I actually have numerous speeches in yeah. Clerks. Mm-hmm. It has a racist tinge to it, though. Does it really? Mm-hmm. Why? Especially would you when they say get that? into Lando. Uh, I'm gonna have to go back and think about that. And it's a black guy who's giving the speech. Well, no, that's in Chasing Amy, though. Yeah, but that's Kevin Smith. Oh, well, that's true. Well, he's a racist. No, he's not. He's not. He's a very nice guy. I didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> I was being. Yeah. No, too late. You did it. Yeah. No. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so any Kevin Smith movie, Chasing Amy would be. Yeah, I love that movie. Oh, see, look see, at I you. Know, oh, oh, see now, I'm, I'm down. I'm down with the diploma right now. All right. I love Chasing that was Amy. Like your, that was like I love the course clerks. you took in high school that counted for college credit. <laughs> well, maybe. All right. Well, maybe that was my AP. Just to, yeah. you know, <laughs> you <go>. serendipitously, <laughs> that one AP class that I showed up for. Yeah. Because I skipped the Spanish one. Yeah. Um, and then what's the other one he? I I think Kevin Smith did it because I'm pretty sure I saw him speak during Mall the screening, rats. which is the one where there's it's Seth Rogen having a lot of sex with um, somebody. Oh, Zach and Mary make a porno. Yes, that not one. a good movie. Okay, but it's a Kevin. It was Smith a great movie. movie up until they decided to make a porno, and then it, and then it just completely fell apart. Yeah, yeah and it was okay. like this this uh, romantic porno. Yeah, it was just with was like awful. love music and yeah. weird. Yeah. Just, yeah, well, I didn't it say it was really good, weird. but I did. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to bond with you. Guys. No, no, you, and you're doing <laughs> a very good job. You're doing an excellent job. Trying to hang in the in the boy house. Excellent you, and wasn't All you there have to a do Kevin is bicker a lot. That's with basically what we do. <laughs> Matt Dillon and Ben Affleck, where they have hoodies and they're angels. Dogma. Oh, Dogma. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not nah, a fan of that nah, one. Nah, nah, I think it's, it's not that great. I think it's, I think it's okay. All right, we're running up against the clock. We've got a couple of other things uh, to get to. We'll try to get that into the into the last segment. But coming up next, <sighs> we got our interview with uh, Tom Wilson, who played Biff Tannen in. I'm going to make him take me back to 1992, Back to the Future. When we come back. <laughs> You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. If you have an interest in marijuana, you want to know about marijuana, law, policy, and culture... Then feel free to join me, Joseph A. Bondi, every Friday at 11 o'clock in the morning on my show, In the Know 420 on TalkingAlternative.com. Hi, this is Rob Kay. And I'm Callie Alpert. And we're hosts of The Rob and Callie Show. Are you looking for a show that talks about real stuff like life, love, the pursuit of being yourself? then you have come to the right place because we cover topics ranging from chivalry to gratitude to your relationship with money and everything in between. So listen to us on The Rob and Callie Show Tuesdays, 8 to 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on talkradio.myc. Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. I used to work for one of these news websites. I mean, you would basically scour news, find what was just news about that news. So most of them just steal news from other sites? Oh, well, you're not stealing. You're quoting. It's much different. Oh, okay. It's much different. All right. I'm going to quote your car after we leave <laughs> this evening. Secrets of the Sire. Welcome. 
Welcome back to Secrets of the Sire. We do this every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, talkradio.nyc, and streaming live on facebook.com slash secrets of the sire. We talk comics, movies, TV, pop culture, all the fun stuff. We got some great in studio guests tonight. We have Robin Kelly from The Robin Kelly Show. Again, if you're listening to this live, you already know this. If you are listening <laughs> on the podcast, and you're like, what, who are they? Where are they on? They're on talkradio.nyc. They're on Tuesday nights. So check out their show. It's at 8 o'clock. Uh, talks to semi enlightened. I would say more than semi. I mean, you guys are very enlightened. It's a special beautiful attempt at some sort of humility to us. No, yeah, no. Don't don't go with the fake humility. Just be boastful and bragful like we are. Like we're just we're so great at what we do. Um, as long wanna, as we use that voice. That's right. <laughs> I want to give a shout out to Jerry Milani from uh, Wizard World. It was very kind enough to uh, Hi, get me access to a lot of really great celebrities. We're gonna have some really great interviews coming on the next couple didn't weeks. Get me access. To Oh, you, didn't just did, you just didn't ask, and you didn't fly yeah. out there. Yeah, that's the thing. I think that's the downside. I didn't yeah. go. Yeah, that I didn't would that, show if up. you would have been there, yeah. you would have gotten. Is that what I did wrong? Yeah, yeah. It's all, all right, right, though. It's all, all right. right. I'll mm. figure that out. Got some frequent flyer miles. I will not catch a flight at 5.30 in the morning again, though. Yeah, because you're The not, night after we do a show. Because you're not 20 years old. No, I'm just not. It's just, <laughs> boy, I really thought I could do it. No. Um, no. no 5 a.m. is a completely different spectrum. It just, it's not even close. But anyway... We got a great interview, and we're going to kick things off. Uh, we figured it was just appropriate talking about the Geek University and the Geek Diploma and the back to school and all that stuff. So we figured we'd get the actor who played the most infamous bully, I think, in cinema history, Biff Tannen, Tom Wilson. Uh, got to ask him about a whole bunch of stuff, so we're going to play that for you in a second. The one thing, and you know, I was like giving a little behind the curtain, like a little Wizard of Oz kind of thing. Wasn't allowed to ask about Donald Trump. There is an entire... Biff Tannen from the future really looks and acts like Donald <laughs> Trump, and he will not answer questions really? when it comes to Donald Trump. Really? So he is, he, you know what, and got to respect what he's got to do and, right. and all that stuff. Fair so, enough. Fair uh, enough. So without further ado, we uh, present our interview with Biff Tannen, Tom Wilson, Back to the Future. This is Mike Dolce with the Secrets of the Sire podcast, and I am here with Tom Wilson, the from the classic, iconic movie, Back to the Future, um, twenty, you know, so many years has passed now, but the movie still resonates with people. When you were filming, did you think that it would have that kind of impact? Uh, no. Uh, no. We didn't think that it would have that kind of impact at all. I mean, Goonies was the big movie. Goonies had pirate ships and waterfalls, and they got jackets that had leather sleeves. And we got these cheapo windbreakers with Back to the Future back on it. And we were just about a little car that was a time machine. But, um, but it was a timeless story that just hit, it struck a chord in people. Um, I'm always, I always say, I'm surprised that somebody didn't make that movie earlier uh, because of, just because of the premise. You make a time machine. You go in the past and you meet your parents. You know, what would that be like? Would you be friends with them? What were they really like when they were in school? Yeah. You know, and really nobody had done that story. Sure. So of course, and you uh, you enrich the plot, and of course by by meeting your parents, you actually mess up the time space continuum, and maybe you don't exist. All of those things, but just basically, real simple, time machine, go to the past, meet mom and dad, and uh, thirty years later, and it's and it's still, I mean, over and over and over shown, and it's it's just it's just so powerful. It's uh, I'm I'm yeah. I think there's a Back to the Future channel now yeah. where it's just on. Yeah. Because people will tell me, you know, Facebook, Twitter, whatever. Hey, you know, you were on TV last night. I'm like, look, I'm on TV like every night, every <laughs> second. I'm in TV in Hong Kong, okay? So, um, yeah, it's, but, but as I said, it struck a chord with people about family, mm-hmm. about mom and dad. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just a movie that people watch over and over. And they want to express that to me. That's the thing. They want to they say not only, I love the movie mm-hmm. and it was such a part of my childhood. And I've seen it at least you know seventeen thousand times, and I've memorized the entire thing. Yeah. So sometimes you know, sometimes movies do that. Yeah. Uh, talk about the camaraderie with the cast when you guys were filming. I mean, you have Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd. I mean, just uh, was what was the back and forth? Was there any cla- was there any class clowns? Any jokers? Any practical jokers on set? Anything anything cool that we could know? They're really talented actors, but the thing really. That, people don't understand about the movie is it's really hard work yeah like you get to work when it's dark out and you get home when it's dark out and it's it's for a big movie for a major movie studio so yes there's fun yes they got free snacks 
but everybody's working yeah. because we're trying to make this as good as we can p- possibly make it. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I certainly try to be lighthearted about things. I try to joke about things. But, um, but you know, in the, when, it's, when all is said and done mm-hmm. and they turn the camera on, yeah. you're making something that is going to last yep. forever. Yep. So you'd better take it with a certain amount of seriousness mm-hmm. and not because it's not a joke. Yep. I mean, you're making, so, you know, <laughs> I mean, Back to the Future has like been, what, it's now in what, the National Register of Motion right. Picture. Th- those kinds of right. things, right. you know. And I think it is because everyone got along. But everyone was really good at what they do, yeah. you know. They cast the movie well. They wrote the movie well. Yeah. And it ended up to be fantastic and surprised everyone with how fantastic yeah. it was. Mark McClure is a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. And I talked to Mark. Mark lives out in uh, Palm Springs now, California. And we're talking. He says, do you remember that first screening? It was an industry screening. And they're famous for sitting on their hands and sort of watching a movie. And saying, oh, that's not going to go well. I just at the first screening, there was there was like tumultuous applause uh-huh. that continued through all of the credits. Mm-hmm. People were really applauding and cheering. Not me, not my, the movie. Yeah. You know, uh, they they kept applauding as as all of the credits were done and the curtains on the on the screen yeah. closed, and they were still applauding. And that was, I mean, the wow. industry crowd and. You know, I had I was sitting there, and you know, we all saw. Boy, that's a great movie and everything, but it really, it it struck a chord from the very beginning. Yeah. The industry people, all of the kind of the, the sort of cynical uh-huh. movie producers and everything, were just absolutely electrified by it, and everyone was saying this movie is absolutely fantastic. And, you know, I mean, it got good reviews and everything, but it got weird reviews. Like, yeah. this is a classic for all time, wow. for everyone, like, Whoa, <laughs> wow. So so it, it it came as a surprise, you know, in that way, because you make a you don't know. Sure. You're making a time travel movie, sure. you know, but uh, but I'm glad it did. Last question, do you, was it difficult to play a villain, uh, to be the bully? Is it, You know, you're an iconic bully. Is that is, is it difficult to do that role? I mean, I was bullied a lot when I was in school, so it was it was difficult in the way of how do you how do you embody that, and how do you continue in a scene where the actors are so good that it feels like I'm really truly bullying them. That didn't feel good, but the villain is great to play because it's the most interesting character in in the story, because we have a we you know we have our leads, we have our stars who are going around and they get in trouble. Who's causing the trouble? You know, the the villain is always the one turning the story, turning the plot, making something happen. There can be times when a movie slows down a little bit and you think about getting some more popcorn. When the villain is on the screen, generally you don't think about that because something's happening. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Very nice meeting you. Was Tom Wilson back to the future? Uh, now, Hassan made a really great point, and we'll, we'll bring this up before we go to commercial. Um, I did think he was the world's most famous villain, bully in bully. that sense. Yeah, but, in the sense of bully. but you've got another, you've got a different yeah, the, uh, opinion, which we'll get to when we get back. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. <laughs> Are you into comics, movies, and pop culture at large? What about music and TV? Then you're in for a treat. This is Michael Dolce, your host on TalkingAlternative.com. I've been professionally writing comic books, screenplays, and music articles for almost 15 years. Catch my show, Secrets of the Sire, at its new primetime slot, Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and get the inside scoop on the pop culture universe you love to talk about. For more info, go to SecretsOfTheSire.com. Hello, this is Mark Torres. And Pronto Comic Zone, Dominic Sperano. And listen to our show, It Came From the Radio, right here on talkradio.nyc, every Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We talk about entertainment, movies, comic books, and other news. 
So make sure you check us out. That's right here, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, every Wednesday, talkradio.nyc. TalkingAlternative.com the emotional affair. That's awesome. I'm having an emotional affair with you. I have emotional week. affairs like, all the time. I know. Yeah. <laughs> That's this like, is the, I didn't think that was an actual insult to other people, but terrible Well, you're not you're being. not cheating on somebody. Well, if have. you can do that emotionally, I'm cheating on you right now. This is cuz I'm thinking about someone else. You're thinking about yeah. Peter. Oh, Hi Peter. Bye. Secrets of the Sire. Welcome back to Secrets of the Sire. Again, we do this every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern. I uh, want to thank Jerry Milani from Wizard World for getting uh, getting me over to the convention in Chicago, which which uh, is one of my all-time favorite conventions, uh, setting up the interview uh, with Tom Wilson. We've got some great interviews coming up in the next few weeks. We've got some great guests coming in. We've had some great guests tonight. We still have uh, some show left to go into as well, too, but uh, definitely want to give a shout-out to them and, uh, and thank them properly. Now, Hassan, you brought up a great... Great argument, though. My question to Tom Wilson was because I basically thought like who, he has to be the most famous bully of all time, but you had a different one. Yeah, I think I think Tommy from from uh, the Karate Kid does it for me. <sighs> now you because I, I mean, hated that. Yeah, kid. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, you're shaking your head. You're you're absolutely. So I you think... would you would you would pick him over Biff? Um, I don't know if I'd pick him over Biff. I think Biff is a little more iconic. But it's a good runner-up. I yeah, Biff definitely is is more uh, extensive, and I think that he's more nuanced. Yeah, because he's, he's it, in some at some points he's sympathetic. Right, you know, you actually have, and Tommy was just up until the end. Well, no, see, this is what I was going to say. Very this end. is what I was going to argue against Tommy being the most iconic bully. He shakes his hand. After it, there's this, there's when this it's over, right? Though. No, no, but that's the key. Like when it's over, he realized. Like if he was a true villainous bully, he wouldn't show that level of respect right. to uh, I'm just the Karate about, Kid like, at the, that point. The initial experience, because I was never afraid of Biff. Biff was always that's to true. me. Biff he was, was more always, cartoony, huh? Yeah, comedic. Oh, you're right. You oh, know, that's he was a good he argument. was he was very you know he was very over overbearing was and stuff dangerous. like that. But Johnny, yeah, you thought Johnny he, beat the crap out right. of him, and he was like just you know I mean yeah. back back then I didn't know he wasn't doing genuine karate. You know, I thought he, <laughs> I thought he was a ninja when I was a kid. So he was, and he, I mean, you know, there's the uh, uh, what's his name, Ralph Macchio. Yeah, new kid on Isn't the block Machio coming in, Macchio mm-hmm. Macchio. Yeah. You do this every time, Macchio and, Macchio, it's not, whatever. It's not like you ever pronounce a name right, and you do this to me every time. <laughs> I know. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> Stop it! Okay. Anyway, Sorry, so um, and then he comes. He he comes to the beach. He kind of falls for the girl. Like it's very, yeah. it's yeah. very classic romance uh-huh. kind of thing. Yeah. And this guy just comes out of nowhere on his motorcycle, destroys the mm-hmm. the radio, yeah. you know, and he just beats the crap out of yeah. him right there. On he a, was dangerous. Like yeah. he legitimately was dangerous. But and I mean, was, Biff had his moments of danger too. I mean, let's not forget the. But he was, you know, Biff got foiled. This classic, you know, he would iconic. He, Family movie has that sexual assault scene that's not so great. You know, I mean, Biff is doing well, some yeah, bad things. Well, yeah, but that's not until okay. That's not till the end. So you sounds, like, it sounds like well, that's the fifties. You know, that, that stuff happened all the time. That scene's not to the end, so you don't dread that aspect of him. True, and you also see him in the. He's kind of he's slight. His character is slightly neutered because mm-hmm. you see him in the beginning. Yeah, and you see he didn't amount to too much yeah, either. Yeah, you know, and he's just this kind of smarmy. Yeah. jerk. Yeah, you know, so he is very, very, uh, and, I'm, and I take nothing away from from Tom Wilson because. Um, oh, he, uh, uh, he's yeah, brilliant in that movie. Right. I would say he's actually more, he, he showcases it much more in the second movie when yeah. he's the, the tycoon. He's, yeah. He's an amazing actor. He really is. Yeah. Um, so I take nothing away from it. I'm just saying menace wise, I didn't get as much menace off I of him. I can't disagree with that. I, I really can't, right? I, I don't know. Cal, have you seen either of these? 
Huh? Yeah. <laughs> that was. Um, I saw the first Back to the Future. Yeah. Yes. And Karate Kid again, never in its entire. Oh, you got okay. So you know that's oh, no, a are great. You add, are we adding to the list? That's a segue into the oh phys gosh. ed category. Okay. All right. All right. I to was get so your diploma. That I the first list. Yeah. I'm really enjoying. No. It. So the phys ed category, and Rob, we'll get your comment okay. in a second as well too. Got to see the Matrix. There is so much uh, action yeah. Yeah. and fighting. So if you're getting yeah. your phys ed degree, got to look at the Matrix. That has some of the most iconic fight scenes. Brian ever. Abraham also just just told me that his name is Johnny, not Tommy. Yeah, it's Johnny. I kept saying Tommy. Why? Oh, did you really? Yeah. I didn't even catch that. Yeah, John, uh, Brian did. So maybe he should be the host of the show. Well, I mean, we already. I'm already <laughs> kind of in contractual talks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, sober <laughs> contractual <laughs> talks. So he's not going to be the lord of the radio. Yeah. So this All is right. like full circle now. You guys are. A metaphor, or the the whole um, the whole Star Wars thing is a metaphor for your relationship. It's very true. <laughs> it's very true. Creative yes. differences. Yes. My my creative differences. I was drunk. Yes. <laughs> I think it's going to be mutual that we decide to to part ways. It's An- going to be a mutual thing. <laughs> oh, I'm so sad right now. Another. Uh, it won't be on our birthdays though, which is no. a day apart in yes. November. Yes. Up, which, which is, is very odd. exciting. Just is kind of creepy. We both both Scorpios. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that explains. It, it, that's what. It, <laughs> I, I that. always get that in yeah. my entire life. They're like, "What are you?" It's uh, the worst uh, sign of the zodiac. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, That's totally. What I'm I surprised get. you're not no, worse than you no are. No wonder. <laughs> hey, how you're, many dead bodies are in your trunk? <laughs> you're really nice for a school. Like, <laughs> yeah. well, how'd you amount to this? Yeah. You haven't That's, tried to kill anyone That's all crazy. day. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Another. Now this won't be right up your alley. Dodgeball. Ah. Uh, okay. Can you re- remind right. me because again I feel like I may have in Ben my Stiller, travels. Vince Vaughn, Ben Stiller's wife, mm-hmm, the one that looks like Maureen McCormick. <laughs> correct. Great, yes. Correct. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Actually, Christina, wait. No, ex-wife her name's ex-wife Christina, ex-wife Christina or Christine or Christina. I think yeah, I think you're right. Sorry, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, she was. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Kristen Taylor. I think Kristen, her name. Was. Yes. Yes. I think it was, yes, she was right. Marsha. Yeah. yeah, she was. Yes. Marsha, she Marsha, was. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yep. she, they're not married anymore? No, they Poor separated. Guy. They separated. Well, she oh. hasn't really done anything since. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know they separated. I haven't seen her in a movie like since Marsha. Yeah. Marsha. Marsha, 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 Marsha. Um, so, okay. Which that's, were that's fair. brilliant 1990s movies, by the way. Yes. The Brady Bunch movies. I thought they were great. Uh, I thought that was, absolutely uh, was one brilliant. of the best reboots. Yes. yes. By the way, if you want to see me geek out, nerd out, which I do. I do. One. That's the whole yeah. part of this. to me about the original Brady Bunch and Partridge Family. Oh, all right. Uh, just need to. Uh, I just need to plant that right. seed. Okay. okay. So that, you found yeah, that. That's my wheel. We will guest right star there. on your Come show on, again, and we will happy. go into that. Rob, what, what were you going to talk about before in terms of the uh, in terms of the villains, the bullies, or anything like that? Well, I was going to say that Johnny, you just hated him, you know, yeah. and you were intimidated by yeah. him. You know? Tommy, if you were a guy like me, <laughs> now, Tommy was right. cool. Tommy was cool. <laughs> yeah, Tommy was a great guy. Johnny, that Johnny, was Johnny, Johnny was yeah, watch yeah. 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 right. But no, I was like the last kid to hit puberty in my class, so it's like looking at Johnny. He was like, you know, the jock and really yeah. intimidating. Wait, I'm so sorry I'm interrupting you, but with that voice, you entered puberty later than most? Yeah. 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 So yeah. I, my I voice didn't change until I was like 17. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I remember like first You look day. like you could be 17 right now, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, I mean, you do have the five o'clock shadow and right. that's kind of, but you know, there was some 17 year olds that had that too. Like Thanks, you, you could. No, I, no, I appreciate it. No, There's some 14 year olds who's got that now. Yeah. Yeah. No, but Johnny, you hated. And Biff, I agree with you, Hassan, as far as the, the comedic element and the different sides him because he starts out where he's like this schmo who did nothing with his life so you kind of feel sorry for him in a way yeah. yeah but it was also the fact that he was a bit of an idiot yeah you know and johnny seemed like he was a more cunning and dangerous guy where he was planning to hurt yeah what was yeah. his name Wait, uh, 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 Dan, 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 daniel daniel yeah you know what i did just to put it very simply i never hated biff true you know, yeah, and yeah, Biff was right. never Biff was Biff was a great foil. Yeah, but the obstacle really was him trying to get back to the future. Right, was the circumstance. Right, so Biff wasn't really even a villain yeah. in that sense. He was just this this thing that just kept running against him, mm-hmm. and then you know, to kept trying to beat his clock. Sure. So yeah, so, but but. Dan, uh, what's his name? Daniel had to actually build up to be able to sure. physically beat Tommy sure. at the end, <laughs> and he said, whopped him. You said Tommy again. I was, he's he's, he's, he's always going to be Tommy to me. Be Tommy to you. <laughs> yeah. All right. If you guys want to get up by the, a kid uh, Tommy, the so. full list of movies that Callie has to see, I'm going to post this oh, onto. Um, I'm going to post this onto uh, secretsofthesire.com uh, starting 
uh, tomorrow, actually. Well, tomorrow or Friday. We'll get it up there at some point. Yeah. Because uh, we still got to get to the sciences. Or um, not. Maybe we won't. We're going to do it's 2001, a, a Space Odyssey. That was your vote for the sciences movie she has because to see. Because it's a science movie. There's actual science in it. Well, you know, I, well, Sam, Sam said Interstellar. Interstellar was his. Yeah, but uh, you said you said Goonies for history because there's a pirate. There's ship pirate in it. ships in there. That's not a history. Well, it's a pirate ship. No. Yeah, that's the right. count. So you okay. guys are operating under the assumption that I have loads of time on my hands. You do. <laughs> Everybody's got time for movies. You can always you can always you find watch them on your All phone. Right. <laughs> We're gonna do this really quick. We're gonna do an abbreviated version of spinning the racks. We bring you the most fantastical pop culture news out there. Spin the rack. It's <laughs> still our favorite. Yeah, that's our favorite segue. Uh-huh. Yes, our so favorite. So according to, uh, well, I read this in the Daily News, but uh, I believe it's from Variety, or no, from Hollywood Reporter. Shia LaBeouf is not going to participate in Indiana Jones 5. Oh. <laughs> I like Shia. I, you know, I think he gets a bad rap a little bit. Like, I think he's a little mentally because messed up. Because he lost up. his mind. He did. No, he definitely did. He's an he, outlier. He's, look, he's an Hollywood I, outlier. I have never seen a Shia LaBeouf movie where I haven't liked him. I think he's a. I think he's a decent actor. He's That's been true. in some some really great stuff. He's a very likable. He's got an immediate likability yep, to him, yep. right? But then, it, it, you know, in the off screen. <laughs> You know, he, he he's does, a little, he's he a little does tend unhinged. to badmouth the directors unhinged. that he's worked with that, you know, and he yeah. does he does tend to do a couple of things that might make him, you know, I don't know, yeah. kind of not sellable. I, I, I can't disagree with you. I'm also not unhappy. I just hope they don't don't do aliens again. Just keep it keep it in. Why it, not aliens? David Kep has David Kep has already said it's. I know you know what. I, Why I does personally have a problem with aliens? Don't, it was the fifties. Aliens. I don't Done. have a problem with it. I just think um, you Done know aliens. the whole beauty of of Indiana Jones is like more of a grounded reality. So. There- that we will talk about nonsense. that next week. We were going to welcome guest nonsense. Pat Shen in studio. And again, we're going to have an interview with Lester Lauren, the voice of Robin and Nightwing in the new Batman and Harley Quinn animated movie. And he's a, one of the stars of the new Fox sitcom, The Orville. We're going to go into our fall TV preview next week. So we focus on movies today. I want to thank Rob. I want to thank Callie. Give everyone, tell everyone where they can see and listen and all this fun stuff. We are on here, talkradio.nyc, on Tuesday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern. Thank you guys so much for having us. And we love having you Thanks here. Thanks for having us on, y'all. This is a lot of fun. <laughs> and we will see you guys next week. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. do you want to connect with? Are you an entrepreneur or intrapreneur looking to build your following? Welcome to our show. Follow Follow Me Friday Friday with Joan and Priya. Tune in every Friday at noon Eastern on talkradio.nyc. We're We're your digital connectors. connectors. (laughs) Woo-woo! Hey, all you crazy listeners. Looking to boost your business? Why not advertise on Talking Alternative with very reasonable rates? Interested? Simply email at info at TalkingAlternative.com. Are you into comics, movies, and pop culture at large? What about music and TV? Then you're in for a treat. This is Michael Dolce, your host on TalkingAlternative.com. I've been professionally writing comic books, screenplays, and music articles for almost 15 years. Catch my show, Secrets of the Sire, at its new primetime slot, Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and get the inside scoop on the pop culture universe you love to talk about. For more info, go to secretsofthesire.com. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network at www.talkingalternative.com. Now, broadcasting 24 hours a day. 
Hi, this is Rob Kay. And I'm Callie Alpert. And we're hosts of The Rob and Callie Show. Are you looking for a show that talks about real stuff like life, love, the pursuit of being yourself? Then you have come to the right place because we cover topics ranging from chivalry to gratitude to your relationship with money and everything in between. So listen to us on The Rob and Callie Show Tuesdays, 8 to 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on talkradio.myc. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant. And on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. 